Hi everyone, it's Patrick from Assembly AI. In this video, I'll show you 10 NumPy tips and tricks to improve your performance. So without further ado, let's get started right now. So before we start with any of the tips, I want you to remember one concept. We want to avoid for loops as much as possible with NumPy because for loops are slow and NumPy has much faster ways to do this in a vectorized way. So most of the tips I show you now revolve around modifying, reshaping and extracting data from NumPy arrays in a vectorized way. Let's start. The first tip is broadcasting and for this we have to understand that NumPy operations are performed element wise. For example, if we multiply two arrays with each other, then we see that one is multiplied by two, two by zero and three by two. So in theory, they should have the same shape. But if we multiply an array with only a number, then this also works. So here we see that each element is multiplied by 100. So this already applies broadcasting under the hood, which means that the smaller array, or in this case only one value, is broadcast across the larger array so that the shapes again match. So in theory, this would look like 100, 100, 100. And this is an important concept that we should understand. This might get clearer if we look at a second example. In this example, we want to add these values to all the rows of this array. So in theory, it should have this shape, but we can only use the smaller version with only one row. And then this is broadcast, so it is extended to all the other rows. And if we run this, then we see this produces the same result. So this is an important concept that we should understand. The second tip is to use comparisons like equal, equal, greater or smaller for NumPy arrays. So if we apply this to a Python list, in this case, the equal, equal operator, then we see we get only one value, true or false. But if we apply equal, equal to two NumPy arrays, then, as I said, this is performed element wise. So we get an array of the same shape and here it compared each of these elements one by one. So we see a use case for this in the next tip. But by the way, we can also apply this to only one value. Then again, this applies broadcasting under the hood. So now each element is compared with a two. And one cool tip, if we want to get only the indices of the true values, we can use NumPy flat non-zero. And then we see we get index one, so here, and index seven here. So let's see for what we can use this. The third tip is Boolean indexing. This is a technique to extract only values where a condition is true. So we've just seen these comparison operators. In this case, we check A greater two, and then we get an array of the same shape where we compared each element and checked if it's greater than two. And now we can use this as an index. So we can say A and then access these Boolean indices. And now if we run this, we get only the values that are greater than two. And we can of course do this in one, only one line. So this is much shorter. We can say A and then access A greater two. And then we get only these values. So this is a cool tip to extract only the values that we want. The next tip is to use the tilt operator as negation operator. So this is the same example as before, but now we apply the tilt operator in the indexing and then we get the opposite. So here we get only the values one and two. Of course, here we could have set a smaller than two as condition, but it's still nice to know about this tilt operator if we want the opposite. The next tip is called fancy indexing, where we can access multiple indices at once. So we've just seen Boolean indexing where we used an array of the same shape with values true or false. And now as an index, we use a list or a NumPy array with numbers. So these are the indices we want to extract. And if we run this, we see we get the value at index one, three and five. And this is another way to extract only the values that we want. And as a use case, we can again combine this with a condition. In this case, we want to extract only the even indices by saying a modulo two equals equals zero. And then we can use the NumPy flat non-zero method that I've already showed you. Or another way of doing this is to say NumPy argware and then call flatten. And then we can print this and then we can use this as an index and then we get only the even values. 
So here, these are the indices where we have even values and these are the even values. Yeah, so this is how fancy indexing works. The next tip shows you how to sort two arrays with the same rule with arcsort and fancy indexing. So let's say we have some scores and then we have corresponding names. And now we want to sort the names according to the scores in increasing order from lowest to highest. For this, we can use the built-in arcsort function and apply it to the scores. This returns the indices that would sort this array. So if we apply the indices to the scores with fancy indexing, then this gives us the scores in increasing order. And then we can apply the same indices to the names, and then we get the names in the corresponding order also from lowest to highest. The next tip shows you how you can use a list to change the positions of rows or columns, again with fancy indexing combined with slicing. So here we have this two dimensional array, and then we define the new position indices as list, and then we access it like this. So we say A and access the new position indices for the first dimension. So here we change the rows and then we say comma colon to keep all the columns. And then if we run this, then this reordered the rows. And in a similar way, we do this for the columns. So here we say colon first and then comma and then the new indices for the new columns. And then if we save and run this, then we see we now reordered the columns. The next tip is a handy function to get the unique values of an array. So we can say numpy unique and give it the array. And this will return the unique values in a sorted order. And this is, for example, helpful in a classification problem with multiple classes. So these are our target classes. And then we want to see only the unique class labels. With the next tip, you can check if two arrays are equal within a tolerance. This is, for example, very helpful when we compare arrays with prediction values from machine learning models. For example, here we have the actual labels and then the predictions and then there's a small difference, so a slight floating point error that we can ignore. But if we use equal equal, we've seen this before, this will compare it one by one and it's also not ignoring this small difference. So instead we can use numpy all close and now in this case this gives us true because it's ignoring this tolerance. And of course we can specify the tolerance as an additional parameter. So yeah, this is super helpful to check if two arrays are equal. And the last tip is an expert tip with a function that not a lot of people know about. And this is ufunc at. With this, we can perform unbuffered in place operations. And ufunc can be many different functions. For example, it can be at, at, and then we give it the array, then the indices where we want to apply this, and then the value we want to add. So in this case, it adds 100 at index zero, then at index one, and then two times at index two. So this is the result. A different function would be, for example, numpy negative at, and then again, the array and the indices. So this will give us negative values at index zero and at index one. So this is a super cool tip to do in place operations very fast. All right, so that wraps up our 10 NumPy tips and tricks. Let me know in the comments what's your favorite tip. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more Python and machine learning content. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.